Hey, what is up guys? This is Sleet, and in this video, I pose this question. What is a Demeter build? One viewer asked me to do a Demeter build guide, and that actually had me thinking for quite a while. I don't think I've ever seen or done a Demeter-centric build before, other than her crystal beams for a cast build, which I suppose counts. But just like the essence of a Poseidon build is its knockback effect, I wanted to find a build that took full advantage of Demeter's chill effect. And after days of testing, I think I got it. So let's talk about it. So let's talk about Demeter and Chill. Demeter's primary utility comes from her Chill effects, which slows enemies more and more with each stack of Chill up to a maximum of 10 stacks. Almost half of Demeter's boons cause Chill, including several duo boons, so there are many ways to start building stacks. And at max stacks, enemies are slowed by around 50% I think, making evading boss attacks ever so easy. For example, if you took 40% forced overtime from the Pact of Punishment, Chill can more than negate that when it comes time to fight Hades. Chill is also the longest lasting status curse as well, at 8 seconds, which is perfect for proccing privilege status for that plus 40% damage bonus. The benefit of Chill really makes Demeter one of the best support gods, and it seems the developers intended her to play that role. For example, take a look at our duo boons. Pretty much all of them enhance some other god's powers. Only Crystal Clarity and Cold Embrace elevates a Demeter power, namely her Crystal Beam cast. However, none of them take advantage of the Chill effect. The only boons that exploit Chill stacks are these three boons. Arctic Blast, Killing Freeze, and Winter Harvest. Killing Freeze and Winter Harvest are definitely nice to have, but again, they feel like supplemental damage and there's no compelling reason to build around these boons. Arctic Blast on the other hand, let's talk about that. Applying the max of 10 stacks of chill to an enemy causes a large blast, with a base damage of 100 at epic rarity. That is some compelling damage, especially for builds that can rapidly stack chill. But is it worth it? Arctic Blast clears the chill effect, meaning no more slow. Even if you're constantly applying chill, you're never going to benefit from the maximum slow at max stacks. I don't think there is an absolute answer to this question. Again, Demeter is a solid support god, seemingly by design, but that didn't stop me from experimenting with Arctic Blast, and I'll say that the results are pretty compelling. First up is the Aspect of Achilles. But Sleet, why Achilles? His attacks and specials are so slow, you're never going to stack enough chill. You're absolutely right, but it's the best weapon aspect for a cast build, and after experimenting over a dozen times, I am convinced that chill stacking using Demeter's cast is the absolute best way to exploit Arctic Blast. I've actually done the Crystal Beam cast build before in a previous video, link in the top right corner, so I'll try not to repeat myself too much. Still, this time we're building around Arctic Blast, meaning we need to maximize stack building. The three gods critical for this build are of course Demeter, and then Artemis, and Poseidon. From Demeter, you first obviously need to pick up her Crystal Beam boon, and you should start your run with Demeter's Keepsake for that purpose. You'll then want to grab Glacial Glare, which will actually cause your Crystal Beam to last longer and inflict chill, 5 stacks per second. I note here that Stygian's soul from the mirror will almost always be the better choice for Crystal Beam, especially as you increase the beam duration with Glacial Glare. You'll then want to pick up the main event boon, Arctic Blast, to complete the core set. I'd also recommend getting Demeter's Aid as it applies 4 chill stacks per second. Finally, Killing Freeze and Winter Harvest are icing on the cake and should be picked up if presented to you. From Artemis, grab her attack or special boon as these will meet the offering requirements for Crystal Clarity, which will make your Ice Beams track enemies significantly better. We don't want to waste any beam time not hitting the enemy, right? 
More importantly, you'll want to aim for the legendary fully loaded boon, which gives you plus two bloodstones. To meet the offering requirements, we want to grab both support fire and pressure points, which you would want anyways to allow our beams to critically strike. After that, just pick up any of her crit enhancing boons. Remember, there are two other ways to increase the number of bloodstones, through chaos boons and from Charon's shop. I often like to equip Charon's bone hourglass keepsake before the Temple of Sticks, especially if I find a bloodstone item in the shop. From Poseidon, the thing we want most is Mirage Shot, a duo boon which causes each of your casts to fire a second projectile that has reduced base damage, but we don't care about the reduced damage because the secondary cast will stack chill just as fast as the primary cast. To meet the offering requirements, you'll need at least one primary boon from both Artemis and Poseidon. So if you have Artemis' special, then grab Poseidon's attack, or even better, grab his tidal dash as the knockback from it will be helpful regardless. As for your fourth god slot, you're generally free to pick up whichever you want, or more realistically what the game forces upon you. If given the option however, Aphrodite tops my list both for her crit enhancing duo boon Heartrend, but also for the weak status which will help proc privilege status. Athena is also always a great option for her defensive properties like Divine Dash, Holy Shield, and the Death Defiance refills. For Hermes boons, which you generally are limited to two of, I would suggest either of the following pairs. The oft-mentioned Hyper Sprint plus Rush Delivery combo, which will increase your damage output by up to plus 100% every time you dash. Or Auto Reload plus Bad News, which will let you regenerate Bloodstones more quickly and increase your cast damage by plus 50% straight up since your casts never lodge. For hammers, there aren't any that help this specific build I'd say, but it's always a good idea to prepare a second source of damage, and for that, I'd recommend either Serrated Point, Flurry Jab, or Charge Skewer if you're going the special route. This next one ups the ante with even more ice lasers using the Aspect of Lucifer. The build is pretty much the same as for the previous build, that is, you still want to chase after and enhance Demeter's Crystal's beam cast, but this time you also have Demeter on your attack. 
Your cast will do less damage than with Achilles, but now you have another source of fast stacking chill with your rapid fire laser. Because the boon selection is the same as for the previous build, I'll skip that. For hammers, pretty much any of the attack enhancing hammers work well for this build, especially triple beam, piercing fire, and flash fire. For Hermes boons, in addition to the ones I mentioned earlier, you may also want to consider his attack speed boon as well. Before rolling the boss fight clip, let me also put in a plug for Hades Aid, which is an endgame keepsake from Dear Old Dad. It makes you invisible and invincible for a short duration up to 5 seconds when maxed I believe. It's one of the best calls for speedrunners and that's because it increases your damage output from all sources by up to plus 100% for the duration. If you use it prematurely, only your next instance of damage will get the damage bonus and you will immediately lose your stealth. If you charge it up fully however, you'll get the damage bonus for all damage sources and stealth for the entire duration. Note that there's only two notches compared to four or five with other gods calls and that's because Supergiant nerfed it in the most recent patch to punish speedrunners. I'm kidding, I think it was just too overpowered. Still, it is an incredible keepsake and as you get more comfortable with fighting dad and not needing defensive keepsakes as much, consider grabbing for Hades aid. For this last build, I decided to try the Aspect of Rama with Demeter on the special, and unsurprisingly, it is amazing for Arctic Blast. As you know, Rama has a rapid fire special that sends out three mini arrows that ricochet to nearby enemies. So with each press of the special button, you can apply three stacks of chill to multiple enemies. This is made even better with the Relentless Volley Hammer, which increases your special to seven mini arrows. Note that this is the only special enhancing hammer that is compatible with the aspect of Rama, so feel free to grab any other hammer, perhaps either a chain shot or triple shot to apply a second status curse to proc privilege status. For Hermes boons, the hyper sprint plus rush delivery combo or the auto reload plus bad news combo are both very very good. 
In addition, I'd also recommend his boon that increases your special speed. And if this build works well for Rama, I'm pretty certain the aspect of Chiron would do just as well, if not better. Someone please try it out and let us know what you think. that you got this strong. You win, boy. All right, guys, hopefully this was informative and entertaining. I'll note that there are probably other weapon aspects that would also work for the Arctic Blast build, like the other railgun aspects, twin fist aspects, or cast enhancing aspects. If you end up experimenting with them, let us know in the comments how it went. Thank you guys so much, and as always, please consider liking and subscribing to help others find this video and to support this channel. See you guys in the next one.